Why are Houstonians fleeing Houston like somebody just outlawed the word y'all within the city limits? Texans can put up with a lot, but getting rid of y'all might push some of them over the edge. So why are people leaving? It's a good question. Houston has almost always gained in population, like every single year. 2021 and 2022 is one of the only times in their history they've seen back-to-back -back drops in population. Minus 0.7% in 2021 and minus 1.1% 1 .1 in 2022. That doesn't sound like a big number, but it is. It's kind of shown a trend. In the last two census, the city has gained less than 10%, which has only happened three times since 1850, with most decades seeing growth around 30% and up. Now, when you get down and look at the numbers, you could see that people are still moving in from other states at about the normal rate. It's just the longtime residents are leaving Houston faster than ever before. Most of the Houstonians leaving the city moved to other Texas metro areas, Dallas, San Antonio, Austin, and Beaumont. After that, they're moving out of state to Denver, Atlanta, and Los Angeles. So why is this happening? Why are more and more Houstonians packing up and moving on? And that's what we're looking at today, the reasons people leaving Houston gave in a survey as to why they wanted a new place to call home. Got it? Get it? Good. Let's take a look. Number 10, the weather. Yeah, a lot of people don't like the weather in Houston, and I've been there quite a few times, and I gotta agree with them. The weather sucks in Houston, especially in the summer. Houston is known for its hot, humid weather, which can be uncomfortable and even dangerous during the summer months. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, the average temperature in Houston in July is 94.5 degrees Fahrenheit, with a whole bunch of humidity. If you've never been to Houston and you're just imagining Houston is like West Texas, it's not. West Texas is like a desert. Houston is like a swamp. If you're one of those people like myself that likes a little cool weather, you're not going to get much of it in Houston. The winter does get kind of nice and a little bit cold now and then, but the summers are brutal along with the mosquitoes that go with them. It's just kind of harsh. And on top of that, you got the extreme weather events, hurricanes, flooding. Houston's had their fair share of them. They've also seen a few tornadoes and some serious thunderstorms. The flooding seems to happen every year. Then, I don't know, every 10 years or so, a major hurricane blows through that place and just upsets the whole city. But there is one amazing thing about Houstonians when that happens. I've never been there for one, but the news is just filled with people helping each other out. They get through it together. So you gotta like that. But yeah, a lot of people, they just can't take the weather and they bail on Houston. Number nine, the traffic. The traffic in Houston is getting worse every single year. Maybe the fact that they're losing some people might change that, but they've been growing at such a good pace for so long that the infrastructure's really not been able to keep up. It's almost like the city planners are watching how the city's growing and think, you know what, we need a new four-lane interstate right here and we'll, you know, have it do this and this and this. And then when they finish it eight years later, they're all, you know, we should have made that eight lanes each direction. I've been stuck in Houston traffic about three or four times. It's not as bad as Los Angeles or let's say the Bay Area, San Francisco, but it's pretty close. Number eight, social issues. Now, some things kept popping up and I thought each one was important, but they weren't important enough to have their own spot on this list. So I kind of clumped them all together. Social issues. A lot of people complain that they feel socially isolated. Despite its size, Houston can be a difficult place to meet new people and build a social network. Some residents feel isolated and disconnected from the community. There are many complaints on how it's really hard to date in Houston. And there's a few reasons for that. One of them is there's more women than men. Now, if you're a person looking for a woman to bump uglies with, this is a good thing. You have more choices than you might other places. Like in Alaska, where it's like one woman to every five guys or something like that. Houston's not that bad, but it's enough to where it's noticeable. I've seen different stats for it, but it's usually something like if you take 100 people in Houston, there's 55 women for every 45 men. Now, some of the problems with this is if you're a woman and you're looking for a man, your options are limited. Years ago, I did a video and brought this up, and I remember reading this article, and this one woman in there said, don't move to Houston if you're married, because some woman will try and steal your man. 
you put in parentheses, men are in short supply in Houston. So that could be a problem. You also have diversity. Houston is a very diverse city, but some residents may not appreciate the cultural differences or feel uncomfortable in multicultural environments. Now, whenever you bring up diversity on any kind of video and you're talking about social things and you'll have a bunch of comments in the comment section about diversity is not a good thing. Just enjoy those and get a good chuckle out of it. They always try and include fake stats. Number seven, pollution. Houston has high levels of air pollution due to its large size and petrochemical facilities that basically surround the entire city. According to the American Lung Association, Houston ranks as the 12th most polluted city in the United States for year-round particle pollution. Basically, air quality sucks here. On top of that, when you have bad air quality, that usually leads into you got bad water quality. Now, their water is not dangerous, but I've read a bunch of things where it tastes bad. You're moving from out of the area, you'll move to Houston, you'll taste the water, and you'll be buying bottled water from that point on. Side note, Los Angeles has the same problem. I never knew how nice water out of a tap tasted until I left Los Angeles. But believe it or not, the air pollution and water quality really bothers a lot of people. It's bad enough when it's hot, humid, and then you just suck it in some exhaust. Number six, the crime. Houston's got some crime. Actually, it is the worst when it comes to crime of all the Texas metro areas. They've got both property crime and violent crime. They say their property crime is 85% higher than the national average, which sucks, but where they're really putting the extra effort in is the violent crime rate. That's about 224% above the national average. That's the 2022 numbers. In 2020, they were only 211% above the national average. So if you're worried about crime, yeah, you could look at those numbers and probably want to leave Houston. Every time I've been to Houston, as I've driven around, I've thought, wow, I bet there's a lot of crime going on around here. Why doesn't that car have any tires? I actually saw a guy stealing a chain link fence. It's not like he worked for some company. This was strictly off the books, and he was taking that chain link fence home, I believe, because most workers don't use a shopping cart to transport parts of a fence. Number five, limited public transportation. Yeah, Houston's public transportation system sort of sucks. It's definitely not as extensive or reliable as some of the other cities of the United States. Houston's not even in the top 25. And on top of that, it's ranked really low when it comes to walkability. Houston is a sprawling city that's not really pedestrian friendly, which can make it challenging to get around without a car. So the public transportation sucks and it's too big to walk around. Who's in charge of this city? Number four, limited job opportunities. Houston has jobs. It's not like they're really hurting for jobs. They just don't have a wide variety of jobs. They have a strong economy and it's home to many major companies in industries such as oil and gas, healthcare, and technology. Outside those industries, it could be a little dicey and a little limited. So if you work in IT, great, you could probably get a job. Healthcare, probably. Oil and gas, sure. R-rated magician at a retirement home, maybe not. Now, whenever I talk about this subject right here, there's a few cities in the United States that are like this. Actually, there's a few states that are like this. They're heavy in a couple different industries, but not a bunch of different industries. Like California, you could find anything. Just about any industry is well represented in California. It's also in Dallas. Dallas is pretty good. Atlanta has a strong market in different industries. But Houston's just a city that has a lot of jobs in just a few different industries. That's why a lot of people listed career change as the reason they left Houston. Probably changed careers and didn't find a new one there. Number three, high cost of living. This is something people put down a lot. It's at the number three spot. The statistical reality is Houston's not that bad when you compare it to other major cities in the United States. But I have a theory on this one that I have no proof of. I'm just assuming. Houston is down there in South Texas near Louisiana. So it's Southeast Texas. Louisiana's dirt cheap. And after Louisiana, you have Mississippi, which is, I don't know, what's lower than dirt cheap. And a lot of the people that do end up in Houston, let's say for a handful of years for work or whatever, come from Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama. Matter of fact, after Hurricane Katrina in 2005, a lot of people from the New Orleans area and really all of Louisiana moved to Houston. 
But it's not just after a hurricane that people start heading to Houston. Houston has been in the top 10 list for people relocating from Louisiana since 1996. I'm sure before then, but that's how far back the list goes. Houston's the biggest metro area outside Louisiana, so it only makes sense. It's a no-brainer. But yeah, that's my theory. People that are coming from Louisiana and parts of the Deep South, they get to Houston and they get a little sticker shock. Number two, it's poorly planned. Most cities have a rhythm to them. They're planned out properly. You know what to expect. You're in a residential area. You expect homes, maybe a condo, maybe an apartment building. You go to an area where there's a bunch of apartment buildings. You'll find a bunch of apartment buildings, maybe a house or two. Drive down a main strip and you have a mini mall, maybe an office building. Houston's got their own agenda. This right here is a perfect example. You have these nice duplexes or whatever they are, like condos, and directly across the street, they just built like a 25 story office building. That's a residential street. Back in 2018, I did a video about Houston and I found out this is one of the biggest complaints people from Houston and people moving to Houston, pretty much everybody, complained about. But back to that giant building, that residential neighborhood, even if half of it or all of its apartments and not just an office building, it's too big for that neighborhood. Another complaint people have about Houston is lack of green spaces. They don't have a lot of parks and they don't have any, you know, like wooded areas with hiking trails. They just don't go into that. If they did and knowing how they planned out their city, you might be on a five mile hike into the woods and find a Starbucks all by itself. Round the bend and you might find the last pager dealership in the country. I miss pagers. It was so much harder to get a hold of me back then. I've been paging you for like three days. Huh, I, I didn't get the page. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, but that's one of the biggest complaints people have is the city's confusing. All right, before we get to number one, if you're looking to move to Houston or any place in the United States, there's a link for a website called Home and Money. They have all kinds of tools for people looking to buy a new home, get you in touch with a real estate agent, all that good stuff. All right, on to number one. And number one. Political polarization. Politics has become very toxic here in the United States in the last handful of years. It's a real problem in Texas. This was the number one complaint people had about Houston in that survey. People don't worry about crime as much as they worry about having to listen to someone and their political views. I think part of what plays into people responding like this is the friction that they have between Texans and Californians moving to Texas. Houston doesn't get nearly as many Californians as Dallas, Fort Worth, and San Antonio does, but they get enough. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day, and be nice to each other.